Yes guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to a different sort of video that I wanted to try for you guys today. The international break is still dragging on and as long as it's dragging on, the Chelsea news is also going to be a bit long for you guys as well. All there is to really talk about is Southgate ball and watching it is killing my brain cells, so I guarantee you guys talking about it is going to have the exact same effect. So I wanted to try and mix things up with the Chelsea news, wanted to try and make a bit more of a fun video for you guys today. Someone dropped a little hint that we should do a video on Chelsea is worst ever 11 so i thought you know what we ain't really doing much so fuck it we might as well drop the video so guys this is chelsea's worst 11 of the entire century before we start this video as usual if you guys haven't done so already hit that like button press that subscribe button and smash that bell notification button as well to get the hat trick because there's going to be some players in this video that you would never see a hat trick coming from anyway but guys I'm going to stop waffling. Let's go straight into Chelsea's worst 11 of the century. Goalkeeper, Mark Bosnich. Signed in 1999 by Manchester United as a replacement for Peter Schmeichel after impressing at Aston Villa for most of the 90s. He struggled to match up to Schmeichel's legacy and a mix of injuries and lack of first-team opportunities led to a drop in form. The arrival of Fabian Barthez meant the end of any first-team opportunities for him and he signed for Chelsea on a free transfer in January 2001 to try and rebuild his career. It didn't happen though. Fitness injuries and a loss of form meant that he didn't make his debut until the following season before getting injured in his fifth game in November, which ended up being his final appearance for the club as 10 months later as drug tests found him positive for a bit of the sniff, which led to him being sacked by Chelsea and banned from the sport for nine months. Five appearances and two and a half seasons on 45k a week. If it's not Kepa, it's Mark Bosnich. Right back, Winston Bogard, the man who earned £10 million for doing absolutely nothing. The Dutch defender arrived at Stamford Bridge in 2000 with a glowing reputation, having played 41 times for Barcelona and winning back-to-back -back titles and a Champions League with Ajax. And he had signed on a bump of 40k a week contract, which even he said was he was astounded by, and it was soon apparent why he was so shocked by the offer, as age and injuries had taken their toll on the right back. And in four years with the Blues, he managed just nine games for the club, with his last appearance being in Boxing Day 2000. The lack of game time didn't phase Bogard one bit though. Sitting on a bumper new contract that he knew he didn't deserve or would get anywhere else in the world, Bogard stuck around like a wet fart for the next three and a half years despite Chelsea doing everything they could to try and force him to leave, including demoting him to the reserve and youth teams, but he wouldn't budge, saying, why should I throw 15 million euros away when it's already mine? At the moment I signed it, it was in fact my money, my contract. And you know what? You can't blame him. Centre-back, Tal Ben Haim. Now it'd be easy to say Papi Djilobodji, signed for 7 million and only played one minute of football for the club, but he was sold to Sunderland for profit and with his one successful pass, he's the only Chelsea player in history with a 100% pass accuracy, so we're going to go for Tal Ben Haim instead. Signed on a Bosman in the summer of 2007, he started as a regular with injuries to JT and Carvalho giving him that first team opportunity. But his time was filled with errors and that combined with Alex's good form pushed him to fourth choice centre back with the return of John Terry and Carvalho. In April, he didn't do much else to help himself. He sent for Avram Grant after a 1-1 draw of Wigan saying, if I knew Avram Grant was going to be the coach, I would have signed for another club. And soon he was, signing for Man City the next summer after eating an 80k fine for his comments. Centre-back, Khalid Boularouz. When you're more remembered for your shirt number than your performances, then it speaks volumes about the impact that you've had on the club. Signed in the summer of 2007 after two impressive seasons at Hamburg which earned him the name Khalid the Cannibal, he was signed as cover for JT and Carvalho and because of his versatility in being able to play as a fullback as well as in the centre of the park as well. And he had a promising start to your 6 7 season before poor form saw him drop out of contention for the first team with Jose Mourinho even preferring to use Michael Essien as a makeshift defender whenever John Terry or Ricardo Carvalho was out with an injury towards the end of the season. With the writing already on the wall, Boularouz was eventually loaned out to Sevilla before being sold to Stuttgart on a £7 million loss. Left back, Baba Rahman. Right, I know right now we have two left backs that we don't consider as left backs, but we still can't call either of them flops and neither of them deserve to be on this list anyway. Alonso was key to our last title to win in 2017, and even though Emerson hasn't stamped down a first team spot since Sarri's days, he still had a good performance in the Europa League final, and is higher up the pecking order than Alonso is right now, so we won't be including either of them in this list anyway. Instead, we're going to go for Baba Rahman. 
another big signing sentence to Purgatory in the Chelsea loan army. He was signed in the summer of 2015 for £22 million, a window nearly as bad as the 2017 monstrosity, but trust me, we're going to be coming onto that later on in this video. He failed to establish himself as a first choice left back over Aspel Equator, only making 15 Premier League appearances throughout the season and was loaned out the following summer by Antonio Conte with the Italian preferring more defensive minded players in his position. Five years down the line, he's still on a loan deal and he's still contracted the club, but we might end up getting rid of him sooner or later. Centre mid, Timu Bakayoko. Signed for £40 million during the dreaded 2017 transfer window from hell, he was the second most expensive signing after another underwhelming signing in Fernando Torres, but his performance has made the Torres transfer look like the steal of the decade. He starred well to be fair to him, with strong performances against Spurs, Arsenal and Atletico Madrid endearing him to Chelsea fans, who already had a new chant for him by his first full month at the club. Sadly, this is where it peaked for Bakayoko because after this moment, all he did for the next six months was constantly give the ball away. His lack of concentration, lazy challenges and non-existent passing range combined with the first touch of an elephant came together in a beautiful disaster. And it all came to a head in February 2018 in a 4-1 loss against Watford, where he was sent off after spending 30 minutes on the pitch finding unique ways to lose possession before getting booked twice and walking off the pitch as the Chelsea fans chanted, you're fucking shit at him. Didn't see much more of him in a Chelsea show after that. He had an impressive spell at AC Milan and has looked to found his preferred league in Italy, with Chelsea hoping his most recent loan at Napoli can turn permanent. Centre mid, Danny Drinkwater. Another transfer from the 2017 window and this one made less sense than the back of Yoko deal. The Danny Drinkwater saga dragged for most of the summer with Chelsea eventually setting on a £35 million transfer fee for the midfielder on deadline day. Fucking hell man. But he had a decent season for Chelsea in 17-18, not looking like he was holding us back or anything, but when Bakayoko was playing most weeks, you could understand why the standard was on the floor. When Bakayoko lost the ball, Drinkwater usually played a safe ball to a more technical player. He was only ever brought for depth, which, if finances weren't a question, he probably wouldn't even be on this list in all honesty. But he was signed for £35 million and he was never ever going to be a starter or justify that price tag. Add to that his 100k a week wages and this deal genuinely sounds like a scam from Leicester City. He ended his first season with an FA Cup but didn't feature the next season with Maurizio Sarri not seeing Drinkwater as capable of playing in a midfield free. And he went on loans to Burnley and Aston Villa but failed to impress on either loan and is now playing in the developmental squad as he tries to engineer a move away from the club in January. Centre mid, one Sebastian Veron. Another United reject on the list. Veron signed for Chelsea after two frustrating seasons at United where he struggled to get consistency as he failed to adjust to the faster pace of Premier League football. Signed for 15 mil after United made him the most expensive transfer in English football, Veron came with a point to prove and the opening goal in his debut at Anfield seemed like the perfect start for him to mend his reputation. But injuries hampered his progression and a brand new squad following Roman Abramovich's 2003 spending spree had little time to wait for him to get back to his best with the midfielder only completing 15 appearances, adding to about a million per game. Right wing, Juan Cuadrado. Juan Cuadrado signed from Fiorentina in January 2015 for 27 million, with Mohamed Salah going the other way, which in hindsight might be one of the single worst transfers we've ever made in our club's history. Cuadrado only made 13 appearances, which was enough to win him a Premier League titles medal, but he contributed about as much to that title as I did, before heading back to Italy on a season-long loan deal to Juventus, which turned into an extra three-year loan deal for £5 million a season, with an obligation to buy for an extra £20 million at the end of that loan. Left wing, Marco Marin, the German Messi himself. Can you imagine how different his life would have been if Drogba missed that header in Munich? Thank God he didn't as well. But signed in April 2012 as a plan B for if Chelsea failed to qualify for the Champions League, he fell victim to destiny as Chelsea's Champions League win in 2012 helped them win the race for Eden Hazard and Oscar. And just as quickly as he had arrived, he was forgotten about. He had a few Europa League games on our 2013 winning run before being loaned out across Europe for the next few years before finally being sold to Olympiacos in 2016. Strike Alvaro Morata 
Couldn't be anyone else, really. You can debate Torres all you want, but for that goal against Barcelona and for having a 22-plus goal season in the 12-13 season, including a Europa League final goal, he deserves exemption, especially when compared to this moaning fairy. Signed for £58 million in summer 2017, yes, that window again. Morata had an amazing start to life in England with seven goals in seven games including a hat-trick at Stoke that had Chelsea fans thinking they had an instant replacement for Diego Costa. <laughs> How wrong were we? Where Costa would be bullying defenders all match, Morata would be on the floor if the wind changed direction, that is if he even bothered to try and press anyone. As his time at Chelsea continued, he became more known for racking up offsides than goals, and his one-on-one -on -one accuracy for a £58 million strike was laughably bad at times, with a 2-2 draw at Arsenal the biggest example, as he missed three one-on-one -on -one chances in that exact same match. He eventually lost his first team spot to Olivier Giroud, before Maurizio Sarri gave him another opportunity to impress. Morata still had all the work rate of a dead fish in that second season though, so Sarri eventually went back to Olivier Giroud or opted to use Eden Hazard in a false nine position, something that Conte had turned to as well in, in desperation. Before signing an 18-month loan deal at Atletico Madrid, which later turned into a 55 million transfer to his dream club, where he blamed the fact that his Chelsea career failed on players not trusting him and other reasons which are just basically all bullshit. I still don't know how he made a £3 million loss on him or how we only made a £3 million loss on him, but it couldn't really be anyone else for up front. But guys, that is the end of the video for you guys today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the names I've featured in here. Let me know if there's any names I've missed out that probably should have gone in here over any of the other names I put in. Just let me know down in the comment section below. And let me know any other sorts of videos that you guys want me to do as well. I'm leaving it open to you guys because honestly, for the next three or four days, I don't see any other big Chelsea news coming out. So guys... Let me know what you guys want to see and I'll drop it for you, man. Just let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, like, subscribe. Thanks for staying on for this long. Take care and up the shells.